Trish, who owns the Blue Biscuit right here, which is a really cool bar restaurant, uh, let us use this cabin here last night. It was really nice. It had good heat and it's nice electric blanket and a porch. So we were really stoked. Here's the interior, the hardwoods. She actually uh, rents these out for people who might want to stay here in Indianola, which is also where B.B. King uh, made his home, and he has a museum here. This is the B.B. King Museum, and uh, we're going to meet up with the curator and have a little walkthrough. One of those days. Keep younger toes. That's right, we did. We did. Did you have young, younger kids in here yesterday? Yeah, eighth graders. Oh, wow. I had eighth graders yesterday. They weren't so bad. They were, you know. So tell me just a little bit about how this got all came together. Okay, well, let's see. I'll try to do that. Um, a group in town really wanted to honor BB, you know, because as the native son of Indianola, and he's been going all over the world for the last 40 or 50 years talking about being from Indianola, Mississippi. Right. And we have a great film in the exhibit um, where they introduce him on the Ed Sullivan show, you know, in the oh, 60s cool. from, from Indianola, Mississippi. So, so a really neat, diverse group of people, many of whom wound up being our first board of directors, came together and said, we just need to do something for BB. And they kind of talked about getting a few guitars and maybe a whole house in town and maybe BB would get some photographs. And it started out that way, very small. And then pretty quickly it snowballed and we got some people on board who really knew their stuff. There's a wonderful guy in um, Greenwood, uh -huh. Alan Hammonds, who's a pretty interesting guy to talk to, has a PR agency. He became our first interim director before the doors ever opened. And some other people who came together and said, you know, we need to get some good advice. So they got some consultants, got some their first big donation, and it all just started falling into place. And I, I think along the way, um, uh, some people recognized the potential for economic development and community development and tourism and, and all of these other components. So it took about six to eight years, I guess, to actually break ground. Uh -huh. And, and then things really, really snowballed. We had a Kellogg grant, a Kresge grant. Oh, wow. There was a, a bond issue from the state. But that was only done after the governor said, this is a great idea, but come back to me when you have some money. Right. And you have a couple million dollars. Right. <laughs> we went back, and they raised close to $2 million in this town. Which wow. Which 12,000 people. Wow. So, which it has the advantage of having some good, good strong statewide businesses right, based right. here. But, um, so, then it, it, it just went from there, and we opened in 2008, a really fabulous... Yeah, it's a beautiful Gala, facility. And, uh, it's just a neat place. What's a brief version? Okay, once they got the initial big gift, now they needed to find a site. There was a, you'll see an um, old bank building downtown with a wonderful clock tower. It has some charm. They talked about that. They thought that, that BB's manager was really thinking about a, you know, a new building on the highway where people could see it, but they got uh, two schools of architecture, Auburn and Mississippi State, and their students and some professors kind of did a competition. They came and talked to people, took pictures, did surveys, spent a couple of weeks. They each came back and presented separately to the, the group, and they all chose this site, both chose the site independently. And it, this is an old brick cotton gin. And we think it's the last standing brick cotton gin in the state. Of course, there's still gins that are functioning. You know. Sure. This one was built around 1910, we think, used until the 1960s and then abandoned. And it was a mess. And the dog pound was down the way. And it, you know, there were all these falling down buildings. So, but they were very persuasive that this was an important building. It, you know, sort of symbolized agriculture. It tied the different parts of town together. You know, that sort of thing. So they were convinced, but then they were worried about convincing B.B. and his manager. So when they, they came, they rolled out the plans, and B.B. immediately said, well, isn't that the old Gilmer Gin? And they said, yes, but really, we're going to fix it up. And we, they were just tap dancing, you know, and he said, well, you know, I work there as a young man, don't you? 
and nobody knew that. Wow. So we have this wonderful picture during grand opening of BB sitting on a stool with Lucille looking around like, yeah, I'm back. Wow. Yeah, so there's some neat stories in the exhibit about it as well. So. That's so, so cool. So now it's like a community center, and we have all these cool things here. We can see our stage, and we've got an event coming up um, next weekend, I think. And, you know, on Wednesday we had a stretch and play for three and four year olds and very you know, cool wedding receptions. Is this really hmm? uh, that's right. Zimbo was last night and um, just you oh, know, that's what Jack was talking about. Mississippi on a Saturday night on Church Street, you would remember forever. Two trees and one himself to actually show you anything. Here we learn how to play guitar. So. Thanks for the tips on the museum, and thanks for letting us come in here. Anytime. Glad to really have you. super cool how, how it was designed. It's a super great museum. We so. had a great team come in and help us design everything to make it very accessible for everybody. So we yeah. really appreciate you coming by. Thank you, sir. Thank you.